Hello, I'm Chris. And I'm Tova, and welcome to Chris and Tova's Amazing Adventures. Today, we're going to teach you everything you need to know about traveling and crossing borders with your pets, specifically your dogs. So today's topic is basically how to travel through borders of Central America. So traveling into Mexico, El Salvador, Guatemala, Honduras, and Nicaragua. So these will be very similar to traveling into Costa Rica and Panama, which we have not done yet, but we will be traveling through those borders in the next month or so. If you've been following our channel, you know that we recently have traveled and moved all the way from Canada to our new home in Nicaragua with our two Bulldogs, Tigger and Penelope. In this video, we'll outline all of the pet entrance requirements for each country along with the timelines and also give you some tips and tricks that will just make traveling that kind of distance and through those countries a little bit easier with your furry friends. So we found out through our experience that it's best to be prepared when traveling through the border crossings. Uh, some people have noticed that they were not checked for pets. You should be prepared to cross the border uh, with all your paperwork. Uh, have duplicates of everything. Duplicates, triplicates, like several copies. Have more copies than you would expect to need. Uh, because everyone's going to want a copy. Everyone's going to keep a copy sometimes. Uh, so have extra, extra, extra copies. So since we crossed every border and presented our dogs with a health certificate and registered them in every single country, uh, on the exit, they may ask for when you registered your dog into, the, pro into the, the country. And if you don't have that paperwork, you might have to go and do extra paperwork because you failed to do it on the other border. Yeah, so it's just easier to declare your dogs and go about your business. It was a fairly simple process in every border. Um, just like the border crossings in general, uh, they just take a bit of time. We found that it added an extra hour to the border crossing, I think, typically. Yeah. And in some places it was good, like in Guatemala it was good because they started the dog paperwork right away and then we didn't have to stay right there. We could go and do our own custom check-in and get the tip for the vehicle and do all those things and then come back and actually there, the dog paperwork, they still weren't quite done. Whereas in the other countries, um, it was like one thing at a time. So the pets really did add extra time because it was like we were only working on the pets and not doing anything else simultaneously. So we also found that being organized at the border crossing made things a whole lot easier in several of the processes. Um, so we already had a folder for the dogs. We had a folder for our uh, vaccines, our COVID vaccines. Uh, we had our passport photocopies. We had everything all organized, all in a nice little folder. Made things a lot easier for us. And it showed we were professionals. We knew what we were doing. And they breezed us through the border as if we were not rookies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were rookies on the first one, but then definitely like, yeah, we were, we were organized and, and I think also helpful, like just to get you through a little bit more quickly, like, oh, you've got everything that you need. Um, and then places not trying to like get you to do extra steps or, or send you places to make photocopies if you didn't need it, like you've already had them, then that's one less step. Yeah, having photocopies of everything makes things a whole lot easier because you'll find that the fixers that try to help you, like, oh, photocopies, photocopies, like they'll try to get you, they will try to make a lot of photocopies for you and then charge you. But if you already have all the copies you need, you won't need a fixer whatsoever and you're well organized to carry on. Yeah, and if you, if you do need photocopies when you're at the border, if you didn't find a place before the border, they're very, very cheap to get the photocopies done. It's just, it might not be right there and you might need to like run down the street to like a little store um, where they have a photocopier. So again, that's just like using more time at your, or taking more time at your border crossing session. Don't assume that your vet's regular yearly shots cover all the border crossing vaccinations. Coming from Northern Alberta, 
we found that leptospirosis infection is not a common problem, so it's not part of our regular yearly vaccinations, and we did need to get this prior to leaving. If your dog needs any shots prior to traveling, ensure that you have enough time. Fully vaccinated can take up to six weeks for some vaccinations because they require two doses and the doses need to be three to four weeks apart. And you're not considered fully vaccinated until a waiting period after the second dose. And that's usually about two weeks. So check your vaccinations and your requirements for your dogs early to ensure that you have enough time Otherwise, you might be hanging out in a country for a little bit longer than expected. You will want to ensure that your dogs are taking an antiparasitic. Some brands are only flea tick and dewormer. So a product like Nexgard Spectra or equivalent is what you're looking for. Note that the regular Nexgard is only flea and tick. You will need to see a veterinarian to get a health certificate done. Note that each country has different timelines that the certificate is good for. So depending on your travel times, you may need to seek out several veterinarians en route. Don't worry, this is a quick and easy process and most vets will know what's required, especially those in towns that are near border crossings. So every border we crossed was a little bit different. The same in that the process was very similar in what they were looking for, but whether the dogs got in or out of the car, um, the only place the dogs got out of the vehicle and anybody even like really looked at the dogs was in Nicaragua. Like they had to go out of the car into the little, um, the little animal, inspection office and like they had a little look with over the dogs more so they had like they gave them some water and they petted them and played with them for a little bit but that was like the most in El Salvador they did all the dog paperwork check-in and then I was just chatting with the gentleman and he's like oh you have two bulldogs bulldogs are my favorite can I come out to your car and see them and take a couple pictures and of course we're like well yeah for sure but that wasn't actually part of the process they didn't like require a picture they were taking pictures for their own personal, personal enjoyment. Um, and then the other places, they, uh, Guatemala, they just like looked in the vehicle and like looked at the dogs. Yep. And in Honduras, they didn't even see the dogs. Like we, we went to like a building that was a little ways away from the regular border crossing. Um, we drove there, we parked, and then I went into this little office and did all the paperwork for the dogs and they never came out to the vehicle, never looked at the dogs, nothing. So um, that we found was a little bit different. Like we kind of thought like every place they might get out of the vehicle, they might like touch the dogs or look at the dogs. Not, not really, yeah. Keeping the pups cool and comfortable is our primary concern. We have a temperature gauge in the back seat with the dogs so we can monitor the temperature at all times. We have found that keeping the car shaded and using our USB fans is often perfect for the pups. When we find it's getting a little too hot, we spritz them down with water or we run the air conditioner for a little bit. And sometimes both. So we had in the vehicle, we had the front window shade. Uh, it's like a reflective shade that majority of people are probably familiar with. And then we had on the side windows, we have this uh, mesh screening. So it blocks out the, the windows, but also allows it to breathe if it, the window is rolled down. But at the border crossings, we had the windows up and the side windows covered. 
to prevent any direct sunlight coming in. We have a temperature gauge in the vehicle, so we know at all times what the temperature is in the vehicle. And then we carry that with us when we're at the border crossing. And we put that temperature gauge, we make sure we put it in the back seat with the dogs because in our vehicle, um, we don't have a direct AC vent in the back seat. So we found that from the front seat to the back seat, it's like a degree or two warmer um, when the air conditioner is running. So just something to be aware of. Um, what you feel in the front seat, if you don't have vents in the back, it might be a little bit different. Um, and that temperature gauge is just like a great peace of mind. When we're sleeping in the tent at night, we'd have like the temperature gauge up in the tent so we would know down in the dog area what the temperature was. Um, and we found for the most part, because we would have those, um, those window screens on at night, mm -hmm. so the windows would all be down. So we'd have one on all four of the side windows. The windows were rolled down um, up just a little bit to make sure the dogs couldn't jump out, but uh, windows down and that keeps the bugs out and also any direct sun. And we found that the car was usually like one or two degrees warmer than the tent. Um, but it was good if there was breeze and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And if we found that it was getting a little bit too warm, then we would just remote start and cool the car down for a few minutes and then, then the pups were good. We also had in the vehicle uh, like a water spray bottle so we can just kind of spritz the dog down a little bit. When the fur is nice and damp, uh, they are much cooler. Uh, definitely they will stop panting. A towel with water on it would work good as well. Um, so we had like a couple towels if we needed, we could just like wet the towel and then uh, lay it on the dog so the dogs could lay on the towel. Uh, and then we always had some ice in our cooler just in case. We never needed it, but we had that available for the dogs if, if they were to get too hot or have any issues, we could like put an ice pack on them or like feed them ice to help cool them down. The dog bed in the back seat is also waterproof. So any water we spray on them or ice cubes we put on them or wet blankets or towels that we put on them, it's not gonna go and damage anything. So I recommend that waterproofing the, the dog bed in your back seat. Another really cool item that we got is we have two USB fans and they work really, really well. They have three speeds um, and they will run for like on the low setting, I think they run for like five or six hours and then on the medium higher settings, not quite as long, but those were really great. Um, we just positioned them in the back seat of the car, two of them just to help circulate the air a little bit more and just have that little bit of like airflow on the dogs. Um, most of the time it was breezy, like, like a little bit of a breeze in the evening and stuff, but sometimes there wasn't much of a breeze or on days that it was a little bit hotter, it would help circulate the air conditioning as well. So those were a great find, great pickup on Amazon. Um, excellent for helping stay cool. I would say though, like throughout the trip, all in all, like the dogs did really well. Like there, there wasn't too many times that we felt like they were getting a little hot. Um, a couple of times at night, there was a couple places that we were a little warmer and we did run the air conditioner a couple of times um, at night if it wasn't cooling down quite as much or if it wasn't that breezy. Um, but I mean, we weren't talking like extreme temperature. We are just like, oh, we think the dogs are a little warm. We'll just give them like a little bit of air. Um, and that was perfect. And they've really like acclimatized well to the heat. Like lots of people said, oh, you're kind of crazy taking two bulldogs to Nicaragua. And most of the time, the dogs aren't even in the air conditioning. Like no. we, we air conditioned their room at night, but during the day, they just like hang out and they're fine just to like lay by the pool. Like, I don't know how many mornings that we're looking to see where they are. And both of them are out suntanning by the pool. Well, thank you so much for watching. If you do have any questions about crossing the borders that we went through, feel free to put them in the comments. We will respond to all of them. Um, we did definitely find that we did a lot of research to cross the borders, especially even for some of the countries, it's hard to find online. It's hard to get really good information. So now that we've done it, we really want to share with the community and just make it easier for the next people going through the border. Thank you for watching and uh, we'll see you on the next Amazing Adventure. I'm tired, Miss Pinnell. So it's been a busy day, huh?
So as you can see in our house, it's puppy nap time right now. Watch it there, buddy. You like to take yourself up? Open up.